Hello, welcome to Cornwall. My name's Andy Paramore, this is Andy's Cornish Creations, and in this video I'm going to be making a rolling pin. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different, and I, it's something I've seen on Pinterest uh, that I want to try out, and the idea is that it's made up with um, uh, laminating lots of pieces of wood together. Uh, but putting them on the diagonal so that um, when I turn it uh, they're not going to be straight down the whole length they're going to be diagonally across it and it, it should make a uh, a nice interesting uh, effect um, so anyway um, I've already cut some wood up I'm using um, for the one I'm doing on the video I'm using some offcuts of um, of decent timber that I've got but I'm also doing another one that um, there is literally just a, a bunch of um, scrap and, uh, and a, a pine and cedar left over from some jobs I've been doing. So it's all completely free wood and, um, and to be honest I think uh, it looked almost as nice as the uh, as the, as the sort of proper timbers. And for what I'm doing on the video I'm, um, I'm using some uh, tulip wood which is the light colours, um, some panga panga which is the dark brown, uh, cherry which is the uh, sort of reddy colour and some, um, and some off cuts of oak that I've got. I've always got uh, uh, lumps of oak so I like to fit it in whenever possible because it's free. Uh, um, so basically I've cut them up into, into sort of random widths um, but I've, I've started from the centre with the cherry and then gone light, dark uh, um, and what have you. So what I'll do with these, uh, and I'll do it off camera because we've seen glue ups before and I'm not going to do the whole glue ups, too time consuming. So I'll just, I'll just glue the lot together and uh, and come back um, to let you see what's, what it's like. Anyway, with the magic of filming, that's what I finished up with. So they're all glued together. They've um, they've dried overnight. Uh, I've had them in the house because it's a little bit cooler now, and and I've planed one side of them uh, and uh, and that's I'll put it that way around because I've got a little bit of mineral oil on that end and that's what uh, that's what it looks like uh, so they've glued together quite nicely and um, so that's ready for cutting on the angle now so I'll um, I'll get you down on the on the bench there and uh, show you what I plan to do so this, the idea is to cut across it at an angle. Now I've made it, um, I've made them such a width that this, this piece here is the same, same depth. So what I want to do is to cut across at that angle. That will give me, um, when it's cut out, all the pieces of wood will come across the rolling pin at an angle. So if I do, if I do a couple of lines across here, hopefully you can see that. That's the piece that I will be cutting out. But what this allows afterwards is the two offcuts can then be brought together and make another rolling pin. So I'll get two rolling pins um, sort of for the work of, uh, of one lot of one glue up kind of thing and, uh, and I do like my two for ones if I can uh, if I can get two, two, two lots out of, uh, out of one lot of work it's got to make sense so um, so that's the idea anyway so I'm gonna I'm gonna make some kind of a jig I'm not quite sure what yet to get to, to get a cut to get that first cut uh, done on the uh, on the table saw 
and uh, and then it's just a case of doing a parallel cut to get that second one done but <coughs> hopefully it'll become clear when I film it <coughs> okay so what I've done uh, get you in picture is I've cut this piece of um, uh, six by two um, and I've cut the same angle on it that's here so that um, so that as I run it through the it should as I run it through the saw it should cut that angle on. Uh, just for a bit of added safety I've uh, hot glued the two pieces together so that the two pieces aren't moving around independently and I'll be able to uh, run it through hopefully without any uh, risks of uh, harm. <coughs> right, here goes. of it with the, with the push stick but uh, hopefully you get the idea. Uh, uh, so that's the off cut and, uh, and that will be fixed to the other one, to the other off cut uh, when I've got that cut. So now I'll separate these two and I can, uh, I can just run it through the saw, uh, uh, cutting, it, cutting it parallel by running it through, uh, where are you in the picture, yep, running it through that way. So we'll just get set up and we'll do that. The saw's 55mm away from the um, fence and I can just run it through now. square the ends up uh, on the chop saw so that uh, so that when I mount it on the uh, lathe uh, we've got nice square ends and um, yeah that's ready to go I could I could put it on the bandsaw and just take the corners off um, not sure we'll see how we go but uh, but either way that's ready to go and the two off cuts We'll uh, fit together. Let's see how we're going to do it. Something like uh, oh, that's a bit disappointing, actually. Uh, there's not much uh, character in the offcuts. Might have to try something else with those. Everything's uh, all the good stuffs in the main piece. What I might have to do is. Uh, Slip a couple of pieces in and uh, and do it like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll have a think about that one. <coughs> I think uh, perhaps mis my mistake was using these two wider pieces here. If I'd have used all narrow strips, um, then even when I got these two pieces, there would have been a lot more interest there but um, yes I'll, that's something to think about for the next one right I'll get the ends cut off cut off and uh, and we'll get it on the lathe
Okay, I've been thinking about it, and as it is, it looks rubbish. But I move that over there, and I just introduce one darker piece to go in between the two lighter ones, sandwich them together, and there I've got a nice, interesting looking. Um, rolling pin again so yes so I got my two for one I was worried that I was <laughs> wasn't going to do it for a minute but that really would does work now so uh, I'm going to go with that okay so it's mounted up between centers the first job is to get it to round so I'll uh, I'll film starting off and then I'll come back when uh, when it's fully round Got it running at 1100. Okay, so you get an idea of uh, <coughs> what we're doing. I'll turn the rest around and then come back. Okay, gives you a taster of what it's uh, what it's going to look like. <clears throat> so next, um, a pencil. Let's get the centre. That's the centre. How big can we make it? Probably get a twenty inch. Sort of 19 inches a good length, but uh, let's go for let's go for that. I think the handle. I'm probably talking about two inches, 50 mil for the handle. Might actually actually make that uh, make the handle a little bit a little bit longer. Quite like the idea of it being. Uh, Bit more of a feature. So we'll go with two and a half inch at each side, which is uh, 65 mil. So uh, let's get those marks on. Uh, Centre, but I'll put it there. That's the handle. The full width. Uh, I've decided on the shape. I'm going to come in, um, but then it's, it's, it's not massive. But instead of doing a, a rounded uh, end, which is what most of them, I'm going to I'm going to come and do as more of an oval shape, um, just to make it a little bit different. But uh, I think we'll just more or less make it up as we go. Using my trusty spindle gouge. Uh, what's that? Three eighths, I think it is. Speed 
1500. parting tool and just part that down a bit just so that we don't lose the where the length's gonna be. So I want to be making the handle um, narrower than the uh, than the main body. Like the look of that, so I'll uh, replicate the same thing on the other end and come back. Okay, so we've got it ready. I'm going to start sanding now, and um, I'll sand from uh, probably about 240 down to 320. What is a good idea when you're sanding these things is to get some. Um, something, some sandpaper on a flat board. This one I have uh, on a faceplate to uh, to use as a um, sanding sanding uh, disc for on the lathe. But uh, if you put it if you put it on a board and you um, and you do your sanding like that, then it keeps. keeps it nice and parallel rather than just using a paper and perhaps putting some uh, indents in it so uh, yeah yeah it's a good thing to do if you're um, if you're doing something that you want to keep flat uh, anyway I'll get on with it I'll start sanding and um, and get up to uh, 
320 and then come back. Stand it up to 320. Just give it a little bit of a wipe. And use some abrasive paste. Turn the speed down or I'll get covered in it. The abrasive paste has only got natural products in mineral oil and uh, beeswax, so I know it's I know it's food safe. And uh, I think because it's uh, because it's a rolling pin and it's going to be used, I think just as a finish, I'll just use some um, mineral oil. I don't really want to be putting any waxes or anything on it so much. Well, I hope it looks as nice on camera as it does in reality, because it, uh, yes, it does look nice. So we'll just part it off, uh, not, all, not all the way, uh, I'll cut the last little bit off. Running at about 900. So, I'll cut the last little bit off off camera. Going to the other end.
And there we have it. Okay, so there we have it. A rolling pin made out of, I mean, some of it scraps, some of the uh, the um, oak, and some of the wood I have uh, I have bought in uh, uh, the uh, panga panga and the tulip wood and uh, the cherry. But um, as I showed you before, I've got some um, some sort of real uh, offcuts and uh, scrap wood. I'm going to make another one off. And um, and to be honest, it looks equally good uh, when it when it's all cut up and, uh, and and glued together. But anyway, there's that one finished up at the ends. I'm quite pleased the ends uh, are sort of a reverse of each other. But the dimensions are pretty much the same. Same with the um, way it finishes on that end, and then the reverse on that end. It does all sort of line up nicely. It's got a nice finish. It's not um, it's not gloss shiny, but then again, it's uh, you know if it's going to be used for a rolling pin, it uh, it doesn't need to be. Um, it just wants to be be able to give it a wipe down and uh, perhaps oil it up every once in a while, just stop it from drying out. But yeah, hopefully you can see it's. Um, it's a lovely thing, and uh, I will. Uh, I'll put some stills up at the end, and uh, if you um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, um, share. Um, if you haven't subscribed, if you could subscribe, that'd be great, and uh, and leave me a comment. Uh, as I always say, I like getting the comments. I read them all and I will reply to them all. It's uh, taken me a couple of days sometimes now, but uh, but I do get around to them all eventually. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so it's a lovely sunny day here in Cornwall today. It's uh, there's hardly a breeze and the sun's shining and it's really pleasant outside. I'm going to go and do a little bit of gardening, a bit of tidying up. There's always tidying up to be done in the garden. So uh, I'll be out there this afternoon. Anyway, my name's Andy Paramore. This is Andy's Cornish Creations. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.